ハレルヤ。皆さんおはようございます。10月3日、旧西軍横浜招待、インターネット性別会を始めたいと思います。今日は、旧西軍日本軍国にとりまして、最も大切な日曜日であります。士官、志願者サンデー、一人でも多くの人たちが、神の働きのために、招かれるために、祈る時であり、またその招きに応えるときでありますまずは心から神に賛美して始めていきたいと思います旧世軍歌手248番君を我は今をご一緒に歌ってまいりましょう街道に来てくださった方ご起立して一緒に歌ってみましょうか天地万物を創造され私たち一人一人を守り導いていてくださる神様9月の時も守られ10月を迎えましたあなたが一つ一つの問題を解決に導いていてくださることをありがとうございます今日は日本の旧西軍において最も大切な「士官志願者サンデー」を迎えました神の声を聞いて従う人たちを今起こしてください神の声を聞いて旧西軍の兵士となる魂を与えてください旧西軍の士官となる魂を与えてくださいまた私たち一人一人が心から神様に自分自身を捧げてただただ神の栄光のために生きることができますように
生きるのはあなたのために生きるものとしてくださいますようにお願いをいたしますインターネットを通して本当に心を一つにして礼拝してくださっているお方また性別界の原稿を見て今一緒に祈っていてくださるお一人お一人の上に神様の豊かな恵みと祝福がありますように救い主イエス・キリストの尊いお名前によってお祈りをいたしますアーメン主の祈りを捧げたいと思います主の祈り天に増します我らの父よ願わくは皆をあがめさせたまえ御国をきたらせたまえ御心の天になるごとく地にもなさせたまえ我らの日曜の糧を今日も与えたまえ我ら罪を犯す者を我らが許すごとく我らの罪をも許したまえ我らを試みに合わせず悪より救い出したまえ国と力と栄えとは限りなく何時のものなればなり。アメン。改めて皆さんおはようございます。一週間どのように過ごされたでしょうか。コロナウイルスにおきましても順調に今会場の方に向かっておりますけれども、心の面では引き締めながら、さらに本当にこの問題が解決するように、私たちクリスチャン、しっかり祈っていきたいと思います。それと同時に、感染して苦しんでおられる方、後遺症で味覚が本当に分からなくなっている方、その家族、お一人お一人の上にも、神様の豊かな恵みがありますように、先日見ましたところ、コロナウイルスになられた患者さんの8割の方が最後に会うことができないで、そういう状況の中で、亡くなられたご家族の方も苦しんでおられることを報道で知ることができましたそういうご家族のためにも祈りたいと思います私たちは神様を信じておりますので最終的に神のもとで再会できるという恵みがありますがそういう状況のない苦しい方がたくさんおられますので世界中本当に祈っていきたいと思います今日は「士官志願者サンデー」でございます士官志願者が起こされるように祈りたいいと思いますまた神様私にその声がありますならば神様今従わせくださいと祈りたいと思いますまた今イエス様を信じたいと思う人はそのためにも祈りたいと思います再建信じて神様のご用のためにさらに働きたいと願う方はその決心をしたいと思います大切な日曜日が守られますように心から祈り心を持って歩みたいと思います先週も信仰の証が届いておりますのでご紹介したいと思います一週間も守られ新しい週を祈りと賛美を持って始めることができ感謝いたします信じる者には何でもできるとのメッセージをいただきました私も信仰があると言いながらもしかしたらダメかもしれないとふと思いつつ祈っていることに思い至りますもし身胸なればを当然のように付け加えますしかしメッセージは全知全能の神に全幅の信頼を持って信じるところに神の技が働き栄光が表されると説いています神様どうか誘惑に打ち勝ち神様信じますという確かな信仰を与えてくださいフィリピン4の13の御言葉私を強めてくださる方のおかげで私には全てが可能ですと言い切りたいと思います9月26日は人身取引被害者のために祈る日です。世界中で多くの人が泣いておられることを覚えます。神様、助けてください。またこの方々のために働いている働き人を強めてください。コロナで日常生活が様変わりして2年、収束したらどう動くかを問われる時を迎えているように感じます。具体的に何をしてどう備えるのかを明確に神様に示されるよう求めたいと思います。神様のまだ見ぬご計画を皆さんと共に祈り求めるときに栄光が表されると信じて今日も祈ります。アーメン、ハレルヤ、常に主を信頼し自分の分別に頼らず主の言葉によって生きることは主イエス様を信じる私にとって
またすべてのクリスチャン、旧世軍人にはありがたく感謝なことです。今週の祈りの課題、聖書の言葉によって、光り輝くことができるようにとあります。天地を創造された神様の光から、旧約聖書の中にも光という言葉がたくさんあります。闇から光が輝きいでよと命じられた神様は、私たちの心の内に輝いて、イエス・キリストの御顔に輝く神の栄光を悟る光を与えてくださいました。心が晴れないときにも、鬱陶しいときも、聖書の御言葉によって光を与えていただき、さらに主イエス様が共にいてくださることを日ごとに実感でき、感謝します。この世の嵐に困難を覚えている方々のためにお祈りいたします。それでは244番、我は神の宮、ご一緒に賛美していきたいと思います。私たちの献身の気持ちを込めた大切な歌でございます。ご一緒に歌ってまいりましょう。アメリカにおられます日本旧世軍の司令官でありますスティーブン・モーリス大佐のメッセージが語られます聖書箇所はマルコによる福音書1章16節から20節をお読みいたします読んでいる間に接続の準備をさせていただきます聖書マルコによる福音書1章16節から20節までマルコによる福音書一章十六節イエスはガリラヤ湖のほとりを歩いておられた時シモンとシモンの兄弟アンデレが湖で網を打っているのをご覧になった彼らは漁師だったイエスは私についてきなさい人間を取る漁師にしようと言われた二人はすぐ
に網を捨てて従った。また少し進んでゼベダイの子ヤコブとその兄弟ヨハネが船の中で網の手入れをしているのをご覧になるとすぐに彼らをお呼びになった。この二人も父ゼベダイとゼベダイを雇い人たちと一緒に船に残してイエスの後についていった。And today, I want to focus our attention on God's calling on our lives. I want to share from Mark chapter 1. And also, I want to share and ask some questions for you to consider today and throughout the coming week. As a fourth generation salvationist, I am proud of my Salvation Army heritage. But honestly, I didn't really want to be a Salvation Army officer initially. As a young man, I was convinced that God could use me better in other ways rather than serving as a Salvation Army officer. I was saved as a teenager and began to build my own plan for my life, which I hoped would be as God's plan as well. As I began to mature spiritually, I reached a point when I realized that I wanted to follow God regardless of what I did professionally with my life. When I entered a relationship with Jesus, which called me to a life of holiness, I remember deciding that from that point on, if God made it clear to me what his desire for me was, and if it was different than my own desire, I would always follow his plan for my life. It was a few years later that God made it clear to me that he was calling me to serve as an officer or a minister for him. And although I was shocked, I felt like I'd made the decision to follow him years ago in my life before. Only years later can I look back and realize how God had my life in his hands every step of the way. And now I thank God that I followed him when his leading became clear to me. As we look into Mark chapter 1, We find that Jesus recruited and called his initial disciples because he saw in them the four attributes he looks for in all of his followers. I want you to listen to these four traits and ask yourself if you have what God might need to serve as a Salvation Army officer today. Number one, Jesus was looking for men that would respond to the call of salvation. In verses 14 and 15. As good Jewish leaders, these men were aware that a Messiah would eventually be coming, but as fishermen, they would have no reason to believe they would be a part of the kingdom building themselves. I think it's key to notice all of those disciples he accepted, none of them were religious leaders of that day. You see, it was the religious leaders. Who were the most critical of Jesus, not supportive of him. They'd come up from generation to generation where people didn't dare challenge their superiority. But they were so religious and pious, there were a little use to Jesus' earthly ministry. Oh, that we not just be today's version of religious leaders of that day. The religious leaders didn't see the need for their own salvation. They didn't recognize their own sin. The initial characteristic of a ministry follower of Jesus is the recognition of our own sin and the need of a Savior who can only be Christ Jesus. This is a requirement for every believer and is essential for those called into ministry as well. 
Have you realized your own sin and come to realize that Jesus' death and resurrection is the only payment which can cancel our sins and allow us to lead lives through the presence of his Holy Spirit? I pray it to be so in your life as it has, in, has been in mine. Number two, Jesus was looking for men that would obey his commands. Their education didn't qualify them. Their intellect didn't impress Jesus. Their knowledge of any particular subject never really got Jesus' attention. He was simply looking for men who could see and experience the power of Jesus and follow his commands for them. Remember, Jesus was a carpenter who was recruiting fishermen by saying, I will make you fishers of men. He's taking them for the skills they had, but for his purposes, those skills would serve as only a backdrop of their lifelong ministry. They understood the process of fishing, yet had no idea how Jesus would train them differently to fish for men. Remember when Jesus was asking how the fishing was going and it wasn't going so well? He instructed them to put the nets out on the other side of the boat. It wasn't the skill of fishing that they lacked, but Jesus already knew where the fish were to be caught. And in much the same way, whatever skills you have already developed through a professional career or through education or ministry, all of that will be utilized for his kingdom. But even if you haven't had those experiences, Jesus will equip you if he has called you. He will prepare you for you to be effective in his ministry. It's that important. Number three, Jesus was looking for men who would follow wherever he led them. Verse 18, come, Jesus said, follow me. At once they left their nets and they followed him. They eventually followed Jesus for much of his three years of ministry here on earth. But I believe part of this requirement of being willing to follow was to ensure that they would remain with him even after his death and resurrection. For it was only after that that his Holy Spirit came upon his disciples and it was necessary for them to be present where Jesus had instructed them to be in order to experience the continuation of Jesus' ministry through the Holy Spirit. They followed him across the countryside to the cross and remained as his ministry to others until the end of their lives. I may be a little old school here, but this is why I don't believe we're called into ministry just for a time. I believe we're called for a lifetime. Once my calling is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ so as many as possible can be saved and spend eternity with the Savior, what other calling could ever be more important or lasting than that? God has intended that we each one are engaged in his kingdom building ministry for a lifetime. It is that important. And finally, fourth, Jesus was looking for men who were willing to put him first. I find in ministry, often when God is calling his children to something specific, like officership, these four are agreeable to most, but this last one is the one which seems most challenging. I wanna help us with this one today in particular. I believe there are no accidents in scripture and even the way the scriptures have been arranged for our reading and studying are important to me. I don't believe it was an accident that this passage we're studying today comes immediately after the ministry of John the Baptist. He served as the very best example of one who intentionally put himself, his needs, his desires after that of Jesus Christ. He had quite a following of believers and disciples and often they would ask if he was Isaiah or if he was the Messiah. If anyone were to have the right to be selfish in his ministry and keep it going, it might've been John the Baptist. 
but he understood that he served only as the one who prepares the way for the Messiah. Verse seven makes this clear. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Somehow, the biggest threat to Satan is an effective follower of Christ. And often Satan works hard to convince us that our way, our plan is equal or sometimes even better than God's plan for us. We find a way to justify our own preferences over what God's calling us to do. Only if we believe either that we know better than God or his calling must be false from the start. We are incapable of solving our own sin problem. Only Jesus made a way for our sins to be forgiven. And in very much the same way, God makes it clear that his way is perfectly planned for our own good. Joshua 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Now, let me close with this. God has a plan and a purpose for the Salvation Army in Japan, just as he has a plan for you. However, if God has specifically called you to serve in the Salvation Army and you decide to go your own way, the Salvation Army and our ministry will be less effective without you than with you. God's plan to call allows him to impact the lives of those closest to you. And when we go our own way, he has to work out something which wasn't the original plan for us. And lastly, the future of the Salvation Army rests with you. Soldiers, officers, junior soldiers, bandsmen, pianists. Surely the uniqueness of the Salvation Army is a valuable opportunity for God's will to be fulfilled in Japan. If you have sensed God's calling on your life before, or perhaps today for the very first time, be in touch with your officer to discuss the specifics of how to follow God's perfect plan for you. And we'll be sure to help you find the way to fulfill God's calling in your life. I pray for the Salvation Army in Japan today. I pray for each person hearing my voice through translation. I pray that if God has called you to officership or anything of ministry specific, that you would have a heart that's open to God's leading and you would today confess that and share with your officer or someone that you trust. God has placed a calling on my life I need to be preparing for that calling. And we'll be supportive in praying for you and bringing together the pieces necessary for you to fulfill God's calling for your life. Let's pray together, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, as I have this map of Japan behind me, it serves as a reminder of your calling on the people of Japan and the impact that those that have gone before us have made for the Japanese people. We thank you for Yamamuro and many others that have come through history. We thank you for the impact that they've had because they've been willing to answer your call and to be officers and soldiers and, and evangelists for you, for the Japan people. We pray Holy Spirit right now that you would be working in the lives of those all across the country, that you might specifically call people into the ministry of the Salvation Army as local officers, as envoys, and as officers, because we believe the purpose of the Salvation Army has yet to be fulfilled in the country of Japan. We pray this believing, for it's in your name we pray, amen. 
I've been reading Gunpei Yamamuro's book, and I'm so glad he answered the call to become saved and then to serve his life for others, his countrymen, so that you and I could come to know Jesus personally. Who is the next for the next generation to serve as officers in the Salvation Army? I'm praying for you. I pray that you'll be praying for me in just the same way. We love you and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless. お祈りいたします恵み深い天の父なる神様今日も私たち一人一人を招いてくださり力を与えてくださってありがとうございます神様どうぞこの日本に神様の御用を喜んでなすところのできる士官志願者を起こしてくださいこの横浜招待にこの日本の一つ一つの正体に、また今、イエス・キリストを信じる人たち、自分を捧げる人たちが起こされますように、また正体の働きのために、本当に心から喜んで捧げる人たちを起こしてください。今こそ、神の御手が動かされ、そして私たち一人一人に献身の思いを起こさせてください。また献身を志している人たちに、確かな声をあなたがかけてください。あなたの計画、将来を与え、希望を与え、平和を与えると約束しておられますから、大胆にあなたに従わせてくださいますようにお願いをいたします。今日もあなたが共にいてくださり、私たち一人一人の上に、あなたの栄光を表してくださることを心から感謝し、私たちの救い主、イエス・キリストの皆によってお祈りをお捧げいたします。アーメン見栄えあれ我らの主に主があなたを祝福しあなたを守られるように主が御顔を向けてあなたを照らしあなたに恵みを与えられるように主が御顔をあなたに向けてあなたに平安を賜るようにアーメン今日もどうもありがとうございましたインターネットを通して一緒に礼拝に加わって祈っていてくださるたくさんの皆さんに感謝をいたしますえー、このしばらくの間、特別に士官志願者、献身者が与えられるように祈りたいと思います、また各省隊に新しく救済軍の兵士、クリスチャンが起こされるように祈っていきたいと思います、1週間、神様の水戸の中に、皆さんお一人お一人が守られますように、心よりお祈りいたします。アーメン。